Hi, my name is Larry Jordan, and welcome to this Power Up webinar, taking a look at media management inside the brand new version 10.1 of Final Cut Pro 10. Apple has totally changed the way media gets handled in this version, and I can't wait to show you what all the new features look like. So let's get ourselves started. The key thing with media management with the new version of 10.1 and Final Cut is that it's much faster and it supports more media. You can open and close media without quitting Final Cut Pro 10. We can eject drives even with Final Cut running by closing libraries inside Final Cut. Media loads faster, libraries now hold more clips, and libraries can automatically back up their databases. Let's start, though, with some definitions. A library is the master container for media for events and for projects. It's a, a single bundle which can be stored anywhere and named anything. All program elements are tracked by the library. You can have multiple libraries open at once. Libraries can be opened and closed as needed from within Final Cut. Media events and projects can be copied between libraries and there's no limit to the number of libraries that you can create. The library is the master container that's the key concept. That holds everything. An event is a folder within a library that holds stuff. It can hold media and projects, or media, or projects. And you can store them in one or more events. There needs to be one event per library. Additional events are optional, and you use them as you would folders in the Finder for personal organization. There's no limit to the number of clips that can be stored in an event. Well, there is, but it's in the multiple thousands. Events are similar to bins in Final Cut 7 or folders in the Finder. This means that the old Final Cut Events folder is no longer needed. Instead, we can view all of our libraries, our media, events, and projects in the browser. Libraries are the master container. Inside that container are folders called events in which we store media and projects. A project is a collection of edits, similar to the Final Cut Pro 7 concept of sequences. Project files can also contain optimized media, proxy media, and render files. In fact, we actually have places to store optimized and proxy media. We can store that inside the event, or we can store it inside the project. Projects, like events, are stored in a library. There's no limit to the number of projects which we can store in a library. Projects are now stored and accessed from the browser, the old project library is gone, and the old project folder inside our hard disk is gone. Also, projects are easier to duplicate now using Project Snapshots, which is a mouse click or a keyboard shortcut, which creates an independent project indicating a particular edit at a particular point in time. Two more really important concepts that we need to understand that took me a while to get my brain wrapped around. One is managed media, and the other is external media. Managed media is media which is copied into a library. Managed media is the best option when you're working as a solo editor and not sharing media with others or with other projects. Managed media is stored inside the library bundle, which makes backups and archives easier and virtually eliminates worrying about unlinked media. So if I'm shooting a standalone event, whatever that happens to be, and all the media from that event is stored inside the library, that media is called managed media. The other option is external media. This is media which is linked to the library using sim links, which are like a super alias, but not copied into the library. External media is the best option for media which is used between libraries or shared with others or shared between projects because clips are not duplicated in multiple libraries when they are linked to external media. However, as the library now only contains links, not the media itself, it means that you need to be careful when modifying linked media not to break the links, which would cause the media to go offline. This is the old problem that we had in Final Cut 7, where we were pointing to the media, but not actually storing the media inside the Final Cut 7 project. If we rename the media or move the folder or rename the folder that contained the media, the links would break. Well, sim links are much more robust 
in the old pointer links inside Final Cut 7. With a sim link, we could actually change the name of the file and the link won't break. But still, when we're dealing with external media, it provides greater flexibility, but there's also the potential for media to go offline or we forget to back it up. So I now have a, a library in which I want to import stuff. Let's do one more library, and we'll go up to the File menu, go down to New Library, and we'll call this uh, Stock Footage. And again, it's automatically Libraries folder selected, and we'll just leave this here. And we'll call that Media. Leave it alone. Libraries are automatically stored in alphabetical order, and notice that they are not displayed by hard disk because the hard disk the library is on, from Final Cut's point of view, is no longer relevant. It's like when you're opening a, a Word document. The Word document does not display the name of the hard disk upon which it's stored. It just gives you the name of the Word document itself. Same concept here with Final Cut. So we need to import something. Well, I'm going to select the event in which I want it imported. Although you can change the event in which media gets imported, it will always import media into the active library. So if I know that I want to import media into glass blowing, for instance, I'm going to select either the library or the event within the library that I want the media imported. The key number one interface rule for Final Cut is to select something and do something to it. So I select the library or I select the event. I'm going to select the media folder for stock footage. With that selected, we'll go up to the file menu, go down to import, or what I always do except when I'm showing you, is I will always type command I because I'm just a keyboard shortcut junkie. This opens up the media import window and look here! I've got my iPhone connected to the computer. And as soon as I click it, all of my images, all of my movie files are available to me on an import. So I could select something here. This is a behind-the-scenes shot of the Two Real Guys podcast that we put together. And I could now bring that photo in from my iPhone the same way as I was bringing it in from a camera or a file on a hard disk. Exactly the same thing. Then when you're done with your iPhone, click the eject button, which ejects the iPhone so it won't bother us anymore, and it puts itself away. So bringing in media from an iPhone does not involve iTunes anymore. It doesn't involve iPhoto. Just connect the iPhone to your computer, and the next thing that happens is iPhones and iPhoto light up. Just quit those two applications, go to Final Cut, select the iPhone, and bring in whatever media that you need. It becomes much, much easier. In my second drive RAID, that's where all my media is stored, I've created a folder called Training Media right here. This is a folder that I use constantly to be able to access all the different media that I'm working with and the different training that I create. In fact, I use this so much, I want to create a favorite of it. So I'm going to grab this icon for training media, drop it on top of the word favorites. I'm just dragging and dropping. It now creates a folder that takes me direct to training media without having to remember what hard drive it's on or what folder it's stored within. So I could go to the desktop, or I could go to training media now just by clicking on this favorites. It's like an alias. And the way that we create it is to drag the name of the folder on top of the word favorites, and it's automatically created. There's plenty of room to create others should you want to. So now I'm going to go inside training media. So I'm going to go down and find some stock footage from Pond5, which is a company I get a lot of stock from. And inside Pond5, I've created individual folders, a folder for animals, of people dancing, close-ups of people, scenic landscape shots, and a space shot, which includes planet Earth. I'm going to select the containing folder. Now, there's two types of editors in the world. One is somebody that is so organized that before they even start Final Cut, they've got all their media categorized and in folders and labeled. These uh, tend to be people that have edited for a while because they've been burned and they realize that organization is critical. Then there's the new folks who just can't wait to start cutting, and they're not exactly sure where the media is stored, but they don't care because getting their story told is more important, and they don't have any organization at all. If you're someone that's really, really, really organized, external media becomes a very simple task for you because you're used to the concept in earlier editing programs like Final Cut 7. 
But managed media is the best choice if you really can't be bothered with where your media is stored. You just want to edit and you want Final Cut to deal with managing the media, then let it copy it into the, into the database. In this particular case, I want to keep these categories. So I'm going to just import selected. It says, where do you want it? I can select any library, any event. So there's my library. I can put it in any event from that pop-up menu. So I can change my mind later. It's just easier to select the event before you bring it in. Or I can create a new event, but I can only create the new event. Oh, I can. that's new. Or I can create a new event in whatever library I have selected here. Go back to here. So I'm going to just specify what event it is or create a new event. These are the four choices that really determine media management. If I copy the files into that particular library, I'm creating managed media. The file is going to be copied, not moved, but copied from wherever it is and stored inside the library bundle. This creates managed media. If I select leave files in place, leave files in place will create external media. It will copy a sim link into the library, but not move the media. If, for instance, I have a common open and common stock footage shots that I want to use between multiple different projects, or I want multiple editors to be sharing the same media at the same time, you want to leave the files in place, because then the library only contains sim links, pointers that point from the library to your media, and I can have multiple libraries all pointing to that same folder of common media without having to duplicate file storage. This is safest in that your media is copied into the library, simplifies backup and archiving, and especially media management. This is more flexible because it allows multiple projects and multiple editors to be sharing the same media. If you are shooting AVC HD or H.264 or AVC Cam, very small file sizes, uh, XDCAM EX, Creating optimized media will make the editing experience go faster. The more you edit camera native, the harder your computer has to work because some of the math on the AVC HD and H.264 files is extraordinarily complex and the computer spends a lot of time having to solve the math to decode the codec to be able to edit. If you're only editing one stream of video, it's not a big deal. If you're in a crushing hurry and all you're doing is a news cut, it's not a big deal. But as you start to add layers, and as you start to add effects, and as you start to do transforms, you start to do Ken Burns moves, and you're working with AVC HD media or H.264 media, the system is going to bog down simply because of the complexity of the codec. To make your life simpler, create optimized media. Yes, the files are bigger, but the reason they're bigger is that the file type itself, which is ProRes 422, is designed to speed editing. It's a very efficient codec that can import faster, render faster, export faster. Everything that you need speed for, ProRes is designed to do. Everything that you need small file size for, AVC HD is designed to do. So we're in what I call a three codec world. We have one codec for shooting, a second codec for editing, and a third codec for final distribution. We'll shoot AVC HD, we'll edit ProRes, and we'll output MPEG-4 to post up to YouTube or to our own personal website. So if you're getting the spinning beach ball of death then always make sure to create optimized media. You're going to need a little bit more storage, yes. But the benefits in terms of performance, speed, faster output, faster export, far outweigh the increased file size. For most of us, creating proxy media is not necessary. I mean, yes, it's necessary if you're doing red files or are ProRes 4x4 files coming off an area Alexa, or you're doing any kind of uncompressed format. 2K, 4K media, proxy media is going to make a big difference. But if all you're doing is editing a couple streams of AVC HD, you don't need proxy media. But proxy media is essential for doing multicam editing. When I was doing some tests of the Mac Pro, the Mac Pro with an extremely high speed rate attached to it could handle nine streams of ProRes 4x4 smoothly, but it couldn't handle 10. 
As soon as I changed that from ProRes 4x4 to proxy files, I could handle 24 continual streams of proxy media for a multicam edit. Proxy media is specifically designed to make really, really small files, not the world's best quality, but small files with good enough quality to do a rough cut edit. Then you can switch back into optimized or camera native files for a final output. These choices right here determine your media management and whether you're going to be working with managed media, whether you're going to be working with external media, whether the media is optimized for editing, and if you're doing multicam, create proxy media. In my particular case, because this library is going to exist exactly for the duration of this webinar, I'm going to delete it. I'm going to leave the files in place. There's no reason to spend the time copying them into the library. By the way, the copying happens in the background and Final Cut switches from camera native to the copy as soon as the copy is complete. This has been an excerpt of a recent Power Up webinar, taking a look at media management inside Final Cut Pro 10 10.1. For the complete version of this online training, please visit our store at larryjordan.biz slash store and look for Webinar 117. By the way, membership is a great value. If you need to stretch your training dollars, a subscription membership to our video training library saves you money. You can access all our videos for a low monthly price of only $19.99. There's more than 700 movies, dozens of hours of training, all in-depth and all up-to-date. Plus, members can attend any of our Power Up webinars for free. Our training covers Apple and Adobe software. We update it every week. And for more information, visit LarryJordan.biz slash subscriptions.